Hi guys, welcome to NAS uh, QNAP live broadcast. I'm Seb. Well, today we were going to introduce our container station and basically we will tell you uh, what is container station and what are the applications. Of course, we will also do the simple demonstration to let you know that if you are also a normal user that uh, will not use container station for your develop purpose, how can you create your own application with your own devices in your home or maybe your uh, working environment. So we invited our PM Judy here today and she will do all the introduction and the demonstration to you. So let's go to the slides first. And this is our uh, container station that is a uh, both platform LXC and Docker supported. So uh, if uh, no matter which user you are preferred. So you can all choose our QNAP NAS and install our container station and play with your own. So the agenda today will be this seven. The first one we will tell you uh, roughly what is container station and uh, uh, why QNAP is a best platform for you to develop your own thing with our container station and the basic concept and small, uh, simple structure of it. And then we will go to the live demo and uh, of course we will also introduce you some uh, well-known famous container stations in the market uh, the containers in the market so uh, if you want to get into this field you can try to download that and we gather several of the uh, questions from our users on the internet and we will also do some simple answer for you and the last thing is we have two short video to tell you how to pack your own container into an ISO file to uh, save inside your own NAS. So first, please, Judy, let us know what is container. Yeah, of course. Uh, container technology is uh, being very uh, prominent and popular in uh, currently, and most of the people um, from software develop development field will mm -hmm. be hearing about this new technology. It's um, becoming famous in 2013. And what is container? It is a uh, virtualization is application level virtualization te technology that uh, multiple virtual environments which is the container they share the same uh, kernel of the host operating system and how how they how they uh, manage is that they, sh uh, they share the resource and uh, consumption and, and the resource management and with the same kernel so they can be uh, migrated into different platforms easily so we have a, a, a structure um, pictures here to to let you know what the uh, simple differences between virtual machines and containers so for virtual virtual machines you have your own uh, on top of your host uh, machine you have your host operating system mm -hmm. but on top of that you ha you have to insert a hypervisor that what it does is to manage the resource and how uh, all guest OS virtual machines are working and inside uh, the, the full complete OS system you have your applications but for container platform um, on top of the host operating system you have uh, there's a docker engine a container engine engine and you don't need a hypervisor and you don't need uh, the guest uh, OS system so simply on, on top of the engine you can run your own applications and for this uh, kind of illustration, some people will be using a house and apartment to differentiate these two technologies. For, for house, you have your own living room, bedroom, and your own um, like electricity and hydro resources. And all the resources are, are you have um, are owned by you, yourself. Mm -hmm. But uh, for container, is that you live in a, a condo apartment. All the hy hydro are, are shared in, in this apartment and electricity like a park is shared or some common areas are shared. This is how container technology um, illustration works. So for the uh, container, it's becoming very prominent currently. It's a popular technology that is used among uh, software developers and um, DevOps. Uh, for the container, because it's very lightweight, so it only takes a few seconds to restart just one container. So if you are a, a small company, uh, enterprises, you have, uh, you have to launch um, 
several hundred or thousands of containers. To restart them, it only takes a few minutes. And comparing to virtual machine, it takes an hours to set them up because it's a complete uh, operating system. But they have different advantages and disadvantages. A container can be, uh, also can be inst instantly launched, deployed, and migrated into different platforms due to its lightweight structure and how they work on the same kernel. So this technology will greatly improve the efficiency of, um, of workers and um, to reduce time costs and reduce resource costs. So just on QNAMNAS, you can have this same platform as um, many big enterprises use. Like for Google, there are several of their cloud services are using containers. So, and um, like Groupon, Expedia, they have many container services that serve uh, in different fields. So for them to repair uh, a thing in a container and to restart them on anything, it takes um, just like a few seconds. So it's a very common and handy technology for you to, to, to facilitate. So QNAP NAS can be your best companion for innovative development. There are four main advantages that we provide. For the first one is our QNAP ex, uh, exclusive uh, features which we provide both uh, Linux container and Docker container in uh, the same platform. And the second one is that because you're using uh, this private cloud, so the private cloud will provide you with an, an efficiency and privacy protective. And all the hardware and software you manage it by yourself and all the network connection, you manage them by yourself. And the third advantage is that for all the network connections, you can manage them by yourself and how to uh, upload and download all the data. You can manage the data. And um, basically for the fourth one, because you are some containers, they, they do require uh, a very fast uh, computing power. Um, using the graphic cards will be helping your development. So QNAP NAS, basically have all you need for, for, for development. Let's go to the, um, take a look at the Linux and Docker containers. We provide dual supports uh, for uh, technology support. So on the same platform, which is container station that uh, provides with all you need on, on just once on the same platform. And we provide one click installation, wi installation wizard. So just, um, just by clicking one button and helps you to um, to set up all the Debian, Fedora, or Ubuntu Linux containers. And comparing to um, other brands NAS, then maybe they only provide uh, Docker containers. So you're not able to like install or, or implement. Or it takes a lot of effort to to make to uh, to have the Linux containers to um, to even run on your NAS system. Uh, also, we have uh, we have building Docker Hub. So just by searching any any word you need, um, any version in the container station, you can uh, pull all the information from Docker Hub and you rank it by um, the popularities. And some basic differences between Linux and Docker containers is their structure. So in, in this picture, you can see that a, a Linux container and Docker container, they all use namespaces and C groups to manage their resources and partition uh, all the different applications. So for Linux, they, uh, it's like a, a complete virtual machine, a lightweight virtual machine. They have their its own binaries and libraries that it, it can run for all the Linux applications. It's um, no problem to run on the Linux container system. For Docker, the difference is is at the middle part of the structure. You can see Docker container has the Docker Docker engine and the container uh, tool that is um, that is uh, in their structure. For the container tool, it can manage uh, the container runtime, how it's uh, when it started, when it uh, when it stopped, and how is the network and storage, all the information. Basically, it helps to manage the containers for you and run on the same Docker engine. And more differences is that um, Linux container is OS level virtualization. So you can see from the pictures that that a virtual machine in one Linux virtual machine contains all the applications you need or web server and everything are in the same a complete OS system. And it's compatible, compatible with all Linux applications and tools. For Docker containers, it's an application level of, of the container technology. 
it composed from for the image that it has doc, uh, container is uh, created from an image and this image is a read-only image and composed of different layers all the layers contains its own file system and, 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 and all the files that need for this container so for some developers maybe just one layer that they need to change it's easy for them to to do any modifications on 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 containers and make it into a different image the difference between container is an image is that container has a writable layer but image is only readable and different layers carry different files and because of this very unique uh, structure of the Docker containers, it can be uh, deployed and migrated in different environments. Second benefit um, we provide on QNAP NAS is that it's a private cloud server, so we provide well-protected privacy in the private cloud. Uh, in the development field, there are many uh, projects that are confidential and all the processes and data that um, that generated from from the development or all the data that need for this development to proceed are confidential and all these informations are, are uh, in a big size and some of them most of them need to be well protected and the private cloud provide you with this kind of service and you can manage all your data and you can do snapshot of it and this kind of uh, server uh, service you can avoid by using private cloud you can avoid uh, the complex payment issues uh, that um, you, you may encounter by using public cloud, clouds because their payment uh, details may not be uh, so clear that you're not able to manage it by yourself and some privacy regulations that uh, uh, the regulation are really long if you are not able to um, to notice about the simple like the some details you may be uh, offense, uh, offended and uh, some also private cloud provide you with comprehensive control over contain containers and operations by managing both hardware and software you can efficiently allocate resources be resources between hardware and the software so you can um, for example you can manage um, the, the CPU usage for certain uh, containers and uh, memory sources for uh, the other containers or uh, the network flexible settings and other resources that you want to manage or even give it um, install a graphic card for this uh, for your own server and by using this because of development you have generated a, a big amount of data or you have prepared a big, um, a big amount of maybe images to uh, to model training your your own um, artificial intelligence container models now maybe some of the data are, are provides better uh, solutions. So you, name, you, you may be categorized in different, um, in different dates and you do snapshot, snapshots of it. So you can uh, go back to your uh, previous uh, environment easily. Or if you have uh, lots of input from, from your container and QT will be a good option for you to um, separate partition your um, hard data and cold data. Also flexible networking are, are provided by our QNAP NAS. This is a figure that, that um, demonstrates how basic network concept our container station is. So you are uh, by having a by having containers running in your NAS and the containers will be it will need a virtual switch and we, um, by installing container station, we already uh, built um, the virtual suite that need for this container station. And between the container and the virtual suite that, uh, that is generated, the connection between them will be a VE, VETH pair. This is how a container and the virtual switch uh, communicates and to, uh, to uh, connect to network. And there are three different modes for the network. The first one is host mode. By using host mode, the container will be using local host network and has the full host network interface access. So uh, for the second one, it will be bridged mode. For bridged mode, uh, the container will be connected to its own virtual switch. It creates its own virtual switch and you can set it for uh, the DHCP server can um, provide a random IP for this container or you can even set a static IP for, IP for the container. 
or you can choose entity mode if this container will need port forward forwarding from the container to NAS. There are very flexible network settings that uh, you can use on containers, such as in, the in our control panel, we have a section called network and virtual switch. So from this picture, you can see how uh, containers and virtual switch are connected to each other and even to the physical adapters. For example, Ubuntu, 16.04 is connected to its own virtual switch, it has a bridge mode and others, uh, most of the containers will be uh, using the LXC BR0, the container network mode for, for them to have connections to external network. network. And for, for other flexible network settings is that um, we also provide virtualization stations in our NAS. By using, um, you can also customize your network environment environments between virtual machines and container. You can have uh, one virtual switch and connect it to one of your containers and to the virtual machines. So the data can be uh, managed between both of them. You can customize your own development and ne uh, network settings. Well, the fourth benefit that we provide is that uh, recently you can, there are many graphic cards uh, that you can use to uh, install on your NAS to give uh, your NAS, empower your NAS for the performance, uh, especially when using uh, artificial intelligence uh, containers. The GPU acceleration is uh, very powerful for you to, for these containers to, to recognize maybe one image or to recognize a language. Um, the difference between using GPU and CPU is that the speed will be uh, different. It will be like three, four times faster for you to use uh, graphic cards. So let's take a look at the container station. The container station, there are three con uh, basic concepts for concepts for using Docker container technology. There are three main roles, and um, these roles are named really um, handy. So registry, image, and container. So registry, basically you store all your images. Image is a read-only layers composed by uh, many different layers for Docker engine to read and includes its own file system. And container is uh, built from, from an image and it can be called an instance. So the difference is that container has a, la a writable layer for you to do infrastructures and all the changes in the container. Here's an illustration for you to, uh, for you to uh, visualize how this technology works. So a registry store all your images, you can pull images or uh, store push images back to the registry or you can use the certain images to create container or even if you do any changes you commit uh, your content new containers back to the image for some uh, developers they that they like to use docker compose file this is a tool for defining and running multiple containers applications so in the simple docker compose file it, it demonstrates and, and defining all and how containers are related to each other, how the network connects to each other, and, and how it likes to be built, and all the par parameters, environments, and settings are in the same file. It's easy for, um, for the system to build uh, an application for you using this file. For some advanced usage of the container, if you like to change an image, because image are generated from Docker file. Docker file is like a text document that uh, describe oh, how the images uh, should run and they compose, compose from all the commands and describe how the layers should do and what the files is like. So you can simply change the Docker file and it will build a different image for you. You can build a different image by changing Docker file. Or um, when, once you have the images, you can uh, export or import into a tar file to your host system or to your PC or you can push it back to registry or you can set a network between containers by by using um, docker compose or store your your data which is in the container volume and store it back to the host um, in, uh, under a certain path you can use command line or use our web ui use our, our container station uh, user interface User interface is very, um, very handy, very intuitive. We'll show you later, and um, in this session. 
So to operate container station, if you are using this the first time, it's very simple. We uh, have uh, categorized it into four simple steps for you to uh, start container station. The first one is pull image. There are uh, different options, different ways of pulling image from registry. And the second one is once you have the images, you can create container by using the image. And the third one is that once you have the containers ready, you can uh, use um, access to the writable layer and do all your infrastructures or all, all the changes or multiple changes that you need for this container. And the fourth one is you can once you have all the containers, you you need to um, manage and over you need the overview of all the contents, how their resources are allocated, and which one is running, which one has stopped, and which one is and um, has um, an, a, another user interface or what what you've done with this container where the volume is stored. We have these overview pages for you to uh, to to scan all the containers at once. So for multiple options for pulling image. There are four different ways. Pull image, you can use our um, go to our recommended apps, and we have a one click installation wizard for you to just by simple click on the wizard, it will pull the image for you and create the Im uh, container for you. This is a simple step for you to uh, pull image. The second one is to, you can, if you have your image, um, like you get it from your friend, or you store it in your personal computer, or at a different folders in NAS. You can import image from PC or local host. Or if you have your own registry, you can pull image from your own registry or from Docker Hub. From our building Docker Hub, I simply just search the image name. And you can look for uh, the Docker Hub you need. So let's go to um, uh, operation. <coughs> yes, let's so go to go my computer. Through. We can uh, take a look at how container station works. So the first one, we talk about the recommended applications. You go to create page. You see we have three, three uh, sections of the recommended application. The first one is artificial intelligence in all the cafe, um, like TensorFlow, all these famous containers are provided uh, in our recommended apps. The second section is uh, Internet of Things. This is also a very famous technology technology that is being used, being used recently in, in the factory, in our smart home, and different fields in our life. You can see all these uh, uh, MQTT Redis uh, containers. But simply just click on any of it that say um, CNTK. Mm -hmm. And you, you, like, it will open the one-click initial wizard, and, and you can rename it or and do resource allocation to set uh, how how much CPU usage you want this container to use or mem memory um, limitations. If you go to advanced settings, you can um, do your environment settings or you can choose the network you need, NIT host or bridge mode. Or under NIT mode, you can even do port forwarding to uh, the container the container port you need or Mm. connect a folder from your NAS to, to this container by simply clicking create. What we do is that we will pull we will pull image and create these containers for you. The second one is if you have your images in your PC or in the NAS, you can import images through here. The import section of the page, by simply clicking import, you can go to your host and browse the folder that has your image stored. Or you can go to Docker Hub in, uh, under the Create section by simply searching, let's say, I just click random word. And if this image has on your host, it will show here on your local host. And we have AI IoT section for the Docker Hub. You can see all the images that uh, started with this name and ranking by the popularities. So this one has the 26, uh, 26 stars. And by simply clicking install, you can open uh, your one-click installation section. You can choose the uh, version you need. 
Next. It will open the one-click installation section and do all the settings yourself. And you have these, and you have these images pulled from Docker Hub. And for the third one is that if you have your own registries, for example, I have already uh, uh, connect my own registry to, to this NAS. You can also set your own registry from here, application from registry. We have a, a, a built-in Docker Hub and, and a this is my own uh, private registry. Here are the four ways of uh, pulling image, but if you want to just pull an image, you can also go to image and click pull. And I have already, I have already set up my uh, own registry, so by clicking this name, see I'm pulling this image. It will pull directly from my registry. Let's go back to the slides. Mm -hmm. Well, the second step of using container station is use your image to create container. And I have shown you that how a container can be created by using a one-click installation wizard. And, and you can set all your parameters and network settings in the wizard. We also support Docker Compose YAML file format for you to insert. Uh, you've already have the file. You can uh, copy and paste the file on a uh, user interface. Also, you can import image from PC or NAS and to create your container. Um, import your image or container from your con um, from your local host or your personal computer. The third one is if you, if you need to build your own personal infrastructure, you can. Um, Click, simply click on the container page and go into the container. You, if this container provides a user interface, web user interface, by simply clicking the URL, it will open another browser for you uh, to do any uh, changes in management. Or we also provide terminal um, for you to access to terminal to do any changes to this computer. For the information of this computer, it, 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 can be, it will be displayed uh, simply by clicking into com com container page. You'll see how, uh, how much resource this container, container has been used, or what kind of network uh, download and upload uh, usage it's using. So if we go back to, um, to our demo computer, let me show you how it has been, um, you can uh, generate and view your own container. So we, I talked about a Docker Compose YAML file. So if you go to the create page, uh, other, than other than searching for the image or clicking uh, the image from the recommended apps, you can come here and we have a button called create application. By clicking it, you can see we have a link to Docker Compose uh, official website. If you need inf more information about this file, this format you can go to the official website to uh, to check more details about uh, your, your 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 format but um if you are not sure what it is we have two samples here so this is how uh, docker compose file looks like if you all if you copy and paste all your files here you can do a validations on your formats so if the formats are all good and a check mark will show beside it then you can simply create your containers from it for other ways of uh, imp import containers to to nas is you go to import and you can import uh, your own containers to to container station or if you want to take a look at how um, for this overview page, you can uh, click on the container that you want to check out. So by clicking it, you go into this container page. It will show you uh, what the image ID is, what the image name is. And we have a console, uh, a console section here. Or if you want to go to terminal, you can uh, access through terminal into this container to do any changes. If you want to change network settings, it's, a, it's a available too. You can click on settings and change your network mode or do any uh, port forward changes.
So if, if this container provides a web user interface for this one, it does. So simply by clicking on the URL, it will take you to the web UI page that you need. And this is all good. For a container, you can it's, you visualize all your sources. And if you like to take a look at how much images you have downloaded, go to image page. It will show uh, all the uh, all the image list out all the images and uh, what is ver its version is and what its ID and uh, how big it is, what the size it is, and uh, when it is created. And also by uh, beside. We have several actions for each image. You can simply by clicking create container on, on one of the image and it will create container for you. So for a container, if you have created your own volume or you want to see how, where these uh, data are stored, you can go to volume page. <coughs> you can see all the volumes that are used by these containers are listed in this vol volume page. For the volume page, it will display. It will display. It will display all the volumes that uh, that is being used by the container. So if you are not sure this um, volume is being used by which container, simply clicking on this action, the glass icon, and it will tell you, oh, this volume is currently being used by this container. And you are not able to remove it because it's being used. And this is how a um, very simple and very intuitive um, user interface that we provide on our container station for you to manage all your containers and take a look at how much resources they are using. So if we, take a, uh, if we go back to the slides, we can take a look at um, the last one is once you have all your con containers created, you, uh, how you are going to um, take an overview of it to manage your containers, images, and volumes that I just demo. And the, for the NAS resources, all the allocations and uh, display. If you like to uh, back up your, your data or container or images by simply go to the export page and export container or images to the NAS for backup. For the network settings, um, we have, we provide um, two virtual switches. The container station will build two virtual switches. Uh, one is for uh, the containers that are, that are running in the container station. And the other virtual switch is provide for uh, containerized applications in App Center. And these settings are, are provided in our container station. Uh, you, if you can go to preference. So if you, we go back to uh, my working computer, You can see you can go to preference, and you'll see two network settings. The LXC BR0 is um, is the bridge that provides internet connectivity for containers in the container station. You can if you want to change its network field, you can simply clicking on here and do some apply, and it will do the changes. Or you can set your own DNS server. If you would like to change the network settings for the darker the Docker Zero Bridge, go to the Docker Zero Bridge network settings. And this one provides internet connectivity for the containers of, of dependent applications and the, uh, for the applications that you downloaded from app centers. You can also uh, change the, its network field and network settings of these containers by simply just clicking here and apply. But if you are, uh, you would like to go back to our default settings, we have a button for you to reset all the networks to default. And these are very handy and very simple for you uh, to by filling, fulfill all your needs by just simple one platforms. So you create, uh, you pull image, create, and do an overview of your containers and you do your network settings and build your registries and connect your registries. It's a very uh, like all in one uh, total solution for for container technology service. So if we go back to the slides, we have. Um, uh, I just demonstrate that we have three uh, big sections of uh, categorizing our recommended com containers, and some um, most of most of them are very popular. We choose um, some examples for you, for you to. Um, let us demo to you how this uh, container works. 
for the first one is artificial intelligence containers. These are open sources that uh, that opened uh, from uh, provided by Google or Amazon or other uh, other uh, big enterprises that how the the, the artificial um, system that they use to do maybe image recognition, face recognition, and other language training. For you to use this uh, container on your NAS, we, we provide a complete storage solution with the graphic cards computing and um, that for you to develop your own training models on your NAS and all the data are safe and, and privately safe and very, uh, very well protected. For the IoT containers, it's a very famous uh, technology that, that are being used by in different fields for you uh, to use such as and if you are uh, still at your workplace, you can remote control uh, your smart home devices such as uh, turn on your air conditioner or turn on your bathtub for you to have the perfect temperatures when you're, once you arrive home. You have, you have these spa temperatures. Or you can um, have your meal cooked already, uh, already when, you, when you arrived home, which these, these are all controlled by remote. And for the well and, and some well-known containers such as Ubuntu, and we provide uh, selections for you to using Ubuntu uh, containers through using a terminal, or if you need to display your work or anything to uh, to your colleagues or presentation, you can also use the. Uh, we have provide a VNC desktop. For the artificial intelligence containers, it's very well known recently in, in the market and the. Four well-known containers that we provide is the CNTK Cafe, MXNet, Net, and TensorFlow, which is provided by Google. And what does AI containers do? For you to train them, you can train them into uh, machine learning for them to uh, do any deep learning or predictive analysis. Once they have all these data, they can learn how to maybe play chess or uh, predict any forecast or uh, what's going to happen based on uh, like your health issues or, 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 or pre uh, the past uh, uh, per big amount of past data and they, they will generate some rules and will predict the, predict the future or other language field if you want to train this model to uh, be having uh, like a um, feed them grammar and uh, all different kind of languages and help them to how, how they can translate one language to another language or train this model to be uh, to, to have image recognition and skill or machine vision for them to recognize an, a picture who the person is or what the item is. So all on this NAS you, we can fulfill all your needs by having all your models trained uh, for use. For, for one NAS that can fulfill all your needs, basically when, when you are a developer and you want to develop artificial in intelligence containers, you need uh, four, there are four items that you really need for, uh, for developing these technologies. The first one is data storage and backup. Because for this kind of, for this kind of technology, there you have big amount of data, you, need, you do really need a, a, a really good a backup system and storage system and, and to, uh, or snapshots that we provide. And you really need a good computing power, which you can in, uh, install graphic cards into your private cloud for you to do model training. And, and we have this uh, platform container services, you can install all your drivers and anything you need. This is a perfect platform for you to train your own uh, personalized uh, artificial intelligence container. For example, Cafe, we have this demo from Q, uh, uh, AI container is that once you have trained your, um, your container, it will show you, you give it a picture, it will, show, it will tell you, uh, for example, this one is a glass, it will tell you uh, like a 40, 50, 4% of these pictures may be sunglasses and other percentage uh, can be other stuff. So if we change to my uh, operation container, let me show you how this works. This is uh, a demo. So for this one, I, I've just changed it to a flower picture. And um, on the right side, it tells you it's 99% 90, it's daisy flower. Um, not um, just one percent that can be B. 
maybe it's because it's yellow, so it recognizes as one percent B. So if we if we try other pictures such as this one, you can see that it tells you the machine will tell you seventy percent of it can be uh, this kind of deer, giraffe of deer, or it can be other other kind of um, animals. So we see this um, whole bunch of apples with different colors. It will tell you it's uh, seventy nine percent of this kind of um, Granny Smith. What what is Granny Smith? It's a kind of apple. Really? I thought it's kind of name of person. Or person? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one person can be called Granny Smith too, or you can uh, recognize it as 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 banana. Yeah, you can, we can search about Gran Granny Smith later. Anyway, <laughs> as long as we have uh, fed enough information to the QAI, I believe that it will have a more accurate uh, answer. Yes, you feed them a um, big amount of data, it will tell you it will be more accurate. So if we go back to the slides, And the other kind of containers is uh, the Internet of Things. We have this techno now technology is commonly used by all different fields, such as uh, in the developers' fields, they, they generate them, build themselves a smart home. They connect a container NAS with the with the development board, such as Raspberry Pi, or you can have your. Uh, you can also connect your sensors to to uh, to your internet and uh, integrate integrate all your data into your NAS and do all the computing in the container. So if you have personal health, if you want to rec record your personal health, you can also use this technology. Oh. Use your technology to. Uh, to store all your health data such as your heartbeat and how much water you drink each day and once you have all these data you may you can set and you have a setting to tell you when you should drink more water or when you should have your exercise or be careful that your heartbeat is really low right now and uh, for this one it's one of the open half, one of the IoT containers. In this picture, you can you can see that we have already installed an open half container, and simply on its web user interface, it will tell you how uh, how you can manage your manage your uh, light. So uh, okay, I will help you to turn it. Into you want to see how how the demo how the light works? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is once it's all set up, you can you can have the you can change your colors such as change the light colors to to red, to orange, mm -hmm. or purple. Or set your brightness settings to make it brighter or dimmer. Saturations intensity color temperature mm -hmm. yeah and this is how this is very uh, convenient for you to have a smart home uh, device on at your home so basically we also have the uh, we also have the phone app that you can easily easily try to use it to adjust your your light bulb you don't really have to do it at your uh, on your computer right yes mm -hmm. okay so uh, <coughs> please hold on one second yes we are uh, have having a yeah, low my power is out in of my <laughs> and it it will this is a common kind of common kind of um living style you encounter in your daily life that you have your phone or your computer that is out of battery yes. we all need a lot of electricity in our daily life right now of course yes 
and including building containers. So make sure your NAS is connected, well connected, and um, well using GPU power that will um, help you make things quicker. Then let's go to our slides. Mm -hmm. So we have the other sessions that will provide uh, popular containers such as Ubuntu. And, and if you want to show, if you have any settings that, that you've already, like, or infrastructure that you've already built in this container, and you will show it, show it to your colleagues or you need to go to website, we ha also provide a VNC desktop. So this is a famous one, and, and the Ubuntu 18.04 is just launched by Ubuntu. So it's very famously used by, uh, by, by many users. So because container station has been launched for several years and we, we have get some uh, questions from, from common questions from users. The first one is that um, so for some users, they, they do manage their uh, uh, share folders very well. So they, they, they do care about their container station data if it's encrypted, but uh, because our um, the, the container station data folder, we do have some system data access that um, to this folder when container station is operating. So make sure that you don't encrypt this folder while you are using the container station or the container station is running. The next one is that for some users, they do want to set the security IP list for certain IPs. Only certain IPs can connect to their own NAS. But once they set, set it up, they, they may find out that some container station or uh, some dependent applications may, uh, may not be working because our firmware, QTS firmware, once you've set up the security settings, we do block the connections from IP layer 3. So some of the connections, uh, internal connections from container and its applications will be blocked. But it's very easy for you to uh, have it back on, on, on on stage, simply by just while you t while you are setting up the whitelist, you can simply go to network and virtual switch and to put all your ne virtual switch uh, networks that you need uh, into this IP setting list. Uh, for container station, it's usually uh, ten point zero point three point zero and ten point zero point five point zero for these uh, uh, virtual switch settings. But if you already changed the container station settings in the preference. Under preference in the container station, you can uh, insert those new new settings onto this page. The third one is that some users may um, may find out that why we we do need to uh, install container station while I'm using other applications such as a uh, QQL agent or no station or QIoT, because some uh, most of we have we do have a certain amount of uh, applications that are containerized applications that do need container station uh, for, for them as a platform to run containers that we provide a resource allocation for them. So we do provide like two platforms. One is for the containers that are running in the container station and these containers will be using the LXC BR0 bridge for them to uh, do network connections. The other containerized applications will be using uh, the container networks through the Docker Zero bridge for, for network connection. And these are the supporting models for container station. We do support most of the NAS models. And we recommend you to use uh, uh, half the NAS model that's uh, over 4 GB memories for container. This technology is to run smoothly. And you can upgrade your memory, use memory uh, as well. We, we do support most of the NAS models. And for some of the developers, they do have a very uh, significant and very uh, well-known, they have their own uh, containerized apps or their own uh, development that want to share with QNAP or they want to be put on app centers. We do have uh, some these information for, uh, for joining the development with QNAP. You can download self-developed apps from recommended at least um, or you want to share these on our app centers. We do provide this information on website, um, which is we have QTS, QDK, we have file management, or, 
or we provide a CK API, some guidelines for you, how you can do development on that and provide all your, all your own development uh, to connect with NAS or to provide it on our uh, platforms. So if we go back, um, we do have a, a video that will show you how, um, how you can provide your containerized, uh, how you can provide your application onto our recommended list in the container station. And if you have your own uh, development, how you can provide this as a QPKG onto uh, App Center. So let's take a look. So this sample is Gitia. We first of all you download Gitia and package um, package yourself and you go to our QNAP DV or a default QNAP repository. Once you go there and you can fork the QNAP DV container apps to your own repository. For this one our uh, private repository is the QNAP demo. Container, containers apps. You can see all these um, all these processes that are being displayed on the right side of it. And you can uh, once you've done fork it, you can download all your container apps, and then put any modifications of it. And you you also uh, put it back to the QNAP demo. The repository and once you go to container station and change your repository owner from QNAP DEV to QNAP demo your own re registry you can see the new GTA applications that you just uh, packaged and it, it's already showing in the repository you can build it just by using a simple one-click application wizard and because me, you may be having uh, several uh, very innovative and very creative uh, applica applications or contents that you want to share with us. You can simply go to go back to your uh, repository, and you can uh, provide. You can uh, click on the pull request. Then it will send a request to to uh, QNAP, and we can validate and validate your information and your, your products, and see if we can put your products, your innovative products onto our recommended list as well. This is uh, the, the video now is showing how you can um, provide your own developments and do a pull request and write some information about your containers, uh, your, your containers, like uh, how, how uh, what's your thoughts, how you design the products and how, how uh, what kind of purpose that you want to, or what kind of Main problems that you want to solve, or what kind of environments you it's better for you for this container to work on. You can write all these uh, your product thoughts to us. For the second one is that to create Docker apps and build your own QBKG app on on the App Center. So if you go to uh, this repository, which is the QNAP DEV Docker QDK2, you can see uh, every single step. That we've provided on this repository how create how to create dockerized app app on QNAP NAS. So the demo we uh, the demo we are using is Nginx, Nginx uh, container application. So how to um, put an Nginx as a QPKG app on our app center. So first of all, you follow the steps. And then once you finish the uh, all the steps and you have your QBKG uh, Dockerized apps ready, you go back to a NAS and go um, go back to a NAS and you manually install your own application. You go to App Center browse and put in your own application engines, and it will install on your NAS. In a few seconds, you can see it uh, display on on uh, as a, as an applications on. On the app centers, you can simply open it, open it, and do all, all the infrastructures or buildings that you need. Yeah. 
For all the information that we show you, it will be showing on our QNAP development platform. Which you can go to this website and all the kits and all the information file you need are provided here. Or if you any, have any questions, you can con um, contact us uh, through this website. Okay, so let's go back to, <coughs> yes, to our slides. Well, uh, these are all the information that we want to bring you today. And basically, I think that container staging is a kind of more advanced usage applications compared to all the other, like, photo station, video station, something like that. So if you want to get into the developer field or you are already uh, good in using container, Docker, or LXC as, as your, your career or your interest, Please try our QNF NAS, and we do believe that our services will fulfill your uh, satisfactory. Yes. And uh, let's go back to live. If you want to see more about this video, please go to live.qnf.com. Mm, yeah, live.qnf.com. And uh, we will have a lot of different videos up there. And please don't forget to subscribe, uh, subscribe us. And thank you, Judy, for coming here. Uh, introducing all the details and uh, information about Container Station and all your live demo. And QNF Live Broadcast, we will see you next time. Bye.